Welcome to another Firearms and Safety YouTube. This here is a ModTac Suppressor Shield, which I'll be reviewing for you today. And you're more familiar, or you're more likely to be familiar with uh, suppressor covers like this. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to differentiate the two and why professionals such as the FBI and the Secret Service use these today. Now, I've included my opinions on how this compares to other suppressor covers on the marketplace. And if you want to dive into it, feel free to skip uh, ahead in the video while I give this quick disclaimer on my relationship with ModTac. Uh, initially, I called ModTac to order uh, another one of these for my Huxworks suppressor. Uh, they were pleasant, informative, and very patient with my questions. Uh, while I chatted, I provided some feedback, and I mentioned doing a YouTube review um, on the product, like I do with other companies. Uh, they were very grateful and hooked me up with a discount. So, that would be on this suppressor shield here, right? So, paid full price for this, a little bit of a discount on this. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the extent of my relationship with ModTac. Um, if I were you, I would check out their Instagram. Uh, they run sales sometimes. I'd sign up for their email updates and, and visit the website for more information. Uh, if you want actual quantifiable data, then they, they actually have a section of their website uh, under resources. And they that's where, you know, th there's a lot more details on um, there's just a lot more information and again, quantifiable data there. Uh, they also have a gallery, which is incredibly helpful, um, proper fit guide. Um, but the gallery I want to highlight for a second, mainly because they have extremely high quality photos and, uh, that helps you determine how it's going to look with one of the, you know, with like a CGS, a Huxworks or a, or a different suppressor of your choosing. So then you could just see how it looks with the firearm already. No pinching on the screen to get a closer look. It's all extremely high resolution. Uh, they're very professional photos. Uh, in the product descriptions under the resource tab, again, temperature testing and firing schedules. There is another YouTube channel that uh, I'd like to give a shout out to mainly because they have such a wonderful review on the product and that is Sunday gun day so uh, take a look he actually uses a uh, infrared temperature um i think it's a laser one of those little infrared uh lasers and basically oh, excuse me infrared laser thermometer Ooh, was having a brain fart uh either way he uses the thermometer to get the live reading so there's no edits and that'll tell you um basically how how hot a wrap would get um, as you can see and then how hot the suppressor shield gets along with an aggressive firing schedule compared to the actual suppressor so he uses an infrared laser thermometer to get those readings and um, it's it's really helpful useful and again quantifiable data so about Montac and I'll tell you a little bit about it while I show you the box uh, Montac was created by two Army Special Forces soldiers uh, who realized there were tactical problems that no one was really trying to solve. And uh, without anyone else stepping up, uh, they decided to launch the U.S.-based Modern Tactical Solutions in 2017. There's an Instagram. and Oh, interesting. Elizabeth, Colorado. I thought their headquarters was in Boulder. Uh, check on that for me, would you? Uh, let me know in the comments. Either way, it's made in the good old USA, which is very, very important. Now, as their motto states, simple solutions to tactical problems. And I'll let you read this on your own for a second while I tell you a story. So basically, their motto is simple solutions to tactical problems. And uh, I, I guess they were spot on because just six years later, their products are used by the Secret Service, they're used by the FBI, used by DHS, U.S. Army Special Forces, 
and local and state law enforcement all over the country. Okay. So they also provide, again, U.S.-based support. They manufacture 100% in-house at their Colorado facility. And uh, I'll get into why that's significant. And that should be looked for when evaluating any product, not just for patriotic reasons alone, but because it will speak to the quality of the product you'll get. Okay. A um, little bit of on manufacturing, uh, American manufacturing. Um, I'll, I'll go into it while I unpack some of this. But when I think of American manufacturing, uh, I think of Origin USA, and I think of Montac. So Montac, excuse me, uh, Origin is a clothing company. So I'm uh, not sure if you guys are into their stuff, but this sweater is one of their stuff. It's very nice. Um, so yeah, this is what it comes with. Okay. That's a T25 or Torx 25. Screw, little bag. I did open this ahead of time, so I'm not sure if this is the exact bag that it comes with. Um, but again, I'm thinking of Origin. I'm thinking of Montac. or back on the subject, rather. Thinking of Origin, thinking of Montac when I'm talking about American companies. So um, they do offer, you know, they manufacture the suppressor shield here, and then they offer training courses at their facility. And I thought it was Boulder, but either way, uh, I'll have to check on that with those guys. Uh, they also manufacture these again in-house and I want to emphasize that this takes a significant investment look at how beautiful this is just take a, a second to admire now, this is a Cerakote C you can actually put a, uh, a clear coat or this actually has a clear coat of Cerakote on top which means you can uh, you can actually spray paint this, you know, for all you rattle can enthusiasts out there. Uh, <laughs> you could you could you can actually put your own Cerakote over this if you wanted to have your own setup. Uh, they have a discount running a limit on um, you know I think it's a until supply runs out on ten uh, suppressor covers. And again, this is used. So I use this. This is, you know, I, I was shooting the shit out. Uh, it's shooting the hell out, you know, out of this. Um, and you can see the uh, the marks from the Hucks works <laughs> blowing out. And I got that uh, measured about half, half an inch longer than it should be, mainly because um, I wanted extra room. And, you know, if my dog or anything's nearby and it touches, you know, as opposed to having it kind of poking out, and getting burned, I uh, have a little bit more room to work with. So, um, yeah, if you're, you know, if you want to be, uh, or just kind of cut it right, you know, right on up there, you're more than welcome to. But, you know, if you, uh, you know, I have a dog and he's outside all the time. So, um, and I'm rather a klutz. So, you know, having that extra, um, I hate to be cheesy, half inch helps. So, um, either way, Talk, you could just see the build quality of this, all right? And um, this is important for a number of reasons, okay? First things first, when you build something in-house, you don't have to worry about partners messing up specs. That leads to bad batches, which leads to shipping delays. And you also don't have to worry about tolerance stacking, and you should, honestly, you should, you should see uh, that the machine they use and the, and the manufacturing technique that they use to create this, it's called high temperature filament wound carbon fiber tubing. Say that five times fast. Um, so this filament winding technique, it, it gives the optimal strength in, in all directions, right? Um, for uh, carbon fiber, it keeps it lightweight without losing the, the crush strength, right? And uh, carbon fiber is prized for its strength. It's incredibly lightweight. Um, it's just super lightweight, and it's naturally heat-resistant properties. Uh, you'll find carbon fiber on high-end racing sailboats, like in uh, the America's Cup race. You'll see carbon fiber on high-end sports cars, Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLarens, 
Um, again, lightweight, strong, heat resistant is the theme. Okay. Uh, strong to protect against dents from on your titanium suppressor, which again, um, titanium, you hit it hard enough while it's heated up. Some of these other materials that, you know, your suppressor is, uh, is bound to get dented, which can affect baffles, uh, which then can affect performance. Um, one of the, you know, the, the other thing is, is this allows me to just throw this in the, in the bag. Like I can go to, this is a huge advantage. You can see I put a little bit of wear on this. If I go to the range and I finish shooting and I gotta get going, I don't have to sit here and wait 20, 30 minutes for my suppressor to cool. I don't have to uh, pour some water uh, on my suppressor, dry it off, and worry about that. I could just take this, break it down, throw it in my bag, and just not worry. Again, I've got that extra, a uh, little bit extra there, so if it's uh, got anything going on or anything touching up against it, uh, I'll be good to go. But this is really nice because it allows you to just pack up, go, um, as opposed to just spending all that time just waiting, uh, which is completely unnecessary and something that you'll be doing with uh, other competitors. Um, and this is something that I'll mention and we'll do a comparison, you know, at the end, uh, just, just so you guys know, or have a better idea of, of how, just an opinion as to how to, uh, approach the pros and cons and really what you're looking for when it comes to a device like this. So, uh, again, lightweight, it, 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 again, <laughs> lightweight at the fore end of your gun. Okay. The fore end if you know anything about weight at the fore end of the gun, you know that due to balance and our good friend gravity, weight near the muzzle feels much more significant than weight on the back end of the gun, closer to your hands, closer to the grip, closer to your body. So that's that's another thing. The lightweight, you got the strength, and the last part, you have the heat mitigation. Um, that heat, or Basically, because it mitigates heat, it prevents burns, and it eliminates mirage. Uh, and again, due to this design, it promotes airflow, which will cool off your suppressor, which you're really going to like. So, moving on, just diving into this a little bit. Um, again, this is a ModTac, not this one. This is a ModTac uh, U-Rack Suppressor Shield. And U-Rack stands for Universal Rail Adapter attached coupler okay that's what this is i believe this whole system together weighs like three ounces it's super light it's i think just this weighs three ounces this is maybe a little bit um i'll have to recheck on those specs but you know don't quote me on that um spring loaded lug kind of setup dual lug uh, so basically you have this right here um just attach it goes right in twist good to go done <laughs> so uh that's that's really nice um it, especially with other designs you have kind of like a well, like a like a condom design where you have to uh slip insulation fiberglass insulation um over the suppressor which i'm not even going to do it because it's such a pain um to, to be honest and then you have to slip this over okay now how does that mitigate heat It, 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 it doesn't. It traps all the heat within the suppressor. Not good for the health of, a, of such a large investment. Yeah, you might hear me say that a couple times. Now, elaborating on the U-Rack, um, you know, this is just one of the little things that comes with it. Um, your Torx screw is going to go right here. This is going to go in between a space in the Picatinny rail or 1913 rail. And... Um, it's going to screw into this part here, and that's what's going to keep it on, okay? Actually, it's this way. Yeah, but obviously, I don't have a, a rail right here, so um, that's that. Now, I really like this because they're, the, the U-Rack, this works, it, you know, again, universal rail-attached coupler. So, if you have a standard 1913 or Picatinny rail... Height over bore of 1.25 it, excuse me, 1.215 inches. You can use this coupler to attach a suppressor shield. 
Uh, this is a Gen 3. It's got the octagonal shape. That's a Gen 2, more of a circle. It's had more of a screw design. A lot of people would uh, over torque it. And uh, that that's, you know, one, they don't even sell this anymore. So it, now it's just straight Gen 3, um, you know, on, off and you're done. It's got that spring-loaded tension, that lug design. Uh, you cannot over-tighten this, whereas Gen 2... Oh, that's tighter. Sorry. Yeah, I, I have not been able to get that one off. So, um, that's Gen 2. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's just a habit of some people. You know, you, you get a screw and you just clamp it down real hard. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm you know, not that I need to get that off. That's dedicated. So uh, I'm really not worried about that. Uh, and I actually, they offered to, you know, just to show you how awesome they are, literally it told me, hey man, send this in um, and, and we'll take this off for you. I, you know, and, and that to me was, was, that's awesome. I haven't done that yet. Got a lot going on. And, um, you know, I will, I'll approach them when, when I got to, in regards to that. Now, the other thing is, is I could just have one, right? I could literally take this off and, you know, and, and I can actually, you know, get another one, uh, which I plan to, because uh, I'm definitely going to get um, more. But one of the things that I want you guys to, um, you know, really be aware of is that you could, again, you could just have one coupler. And, and as you use, if you're using a certain... Um, suppressor you can just slap this on to one setup throw that on there um, switch it between rifles it makes you could just technically buy one have one coupler or you could just buy another coupler i do believe they sell things um in parts you'll have to check on that for me though just because i bought it all together uh like, like i usually do so um many different flavors to accommodate your handguard so if you don't have you know uh, this this kind of the picatinny rail then don't worry about it because they have uh, other setups. So uh, email them if you're unsure, but please check with the website first. There's plenty of information there. Um, it, it, there's a, it was a tremendous resource uh, while doing my research. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I think you'll find it very helpful too. Going through the product list, you have, uh, I would say, four major products uh, currently. They're expanding their product line. Um, you can actually get this replaced with a uh, dark, dark and flag right here. Uh, just a little bit blacker, a little grayer. Uh, people that don't want white all over their stuff. Um, you can actually have a Unity folding front sight, um, which is really nice. Uh, it's an addition, um, and, and they can actually ship it with your uh, suppressor shield. So I actually have that. Um, that's the U-Rack, okay, uh, which is what we have again here, and, uh, again, this is, it's so, it's just so idiot-proof, this design is just incredible, and it's just so light, I just can't get over it, it's, <laughs> um, so yeah, again, you know, me, not so smart, you know, line it up, that's it, arrow, arrow, 90 degrees, done, can't turn it more, it's a lug system, so, uh, beautiful, 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 innovative design. Um, I it's it's so rare that you come across products that you're just you're just wowed at. You're like, oh man, this is what the marketplace needed, you know. And it's it's a shame that um, you know I got onto this a little bit late. So uh, again, U rack, universal rail attached coupler version, okay. And uh, then they have their M rack, which is their modular rail attached coupler okay now this accommodates specialized handguards designed for the department of defense well originally designed for the department of defense the fbi secret service uh, basically it attaches right here so gets rid of this part attaches right here now you can actually have a low profile so it's flat and keeps that smooth surface or you can you can have that that you know, you don't lose that slot. You'll have a Picatinny rail right here on that connection. You, you actually get the option. So, I, I mean, look at how thoughtful, how much thought went into this product. And, um, you know, I, I just imagine the, the people that are out there, uh, you know, working and, and using this on a, on a day-to-day -day basis, how much 
they enjoy using this as well. So I, th I think you're gonna you're gonna have a, a great time, and particularly when I do the comparison, you know, talk a little bit about the condom concept, um, you know, and just the heat, keeping all that heat versus actually having a shield, uh, having something soft rather than something hard. Um, you know, you're gonna be able to to keep your suppressor safe. Um, the MRAC accommodates the following handguards to date. And right now it's uh, July, 2023. So as such, you've got the Geisley URGR handguard. You've got the SIG MCX Virtus KC URX4. Then you've got the Daniel Defense uh, Delta 5 Pro and the KRG enclosed four end. Again, you don't lose that slot, which is critical in my opinion. Now, the next product that they offer is something that came out with uh, a little bit newer, right? And this is for the thick, the chunky boys, the soup can, you know, suppressors that are just thicker than your standard 1.5. Because um, the inner diameter of this, if I recall correctly, is 1.7 um, inches in diameter. Now, the rail attached shield, the RAS XL, is up to 1.9 it accommodates uh, thicker suppressors up to 1.9 inches in diameter uh, one other thing you should know is that uh, the unity folding and the fixed fusion sites will go on the uh, the xl version uh, there is also no coupler on the uh, rail attached shield so uh yeah i want you I want you guys to take a look at that it's pretty interesting um so again, U-Rack, Universal Rail Attached Coupler, M-Rack, Modular Attached Rail Coupler. Uh, then you've got your RAS XL, which is your Rail Attached Shield. Um, I don't know why I did three a couple times there, but yeah, Rail Attached Shield. Then the last one you've got for the fourth product is the Direct Attached Suppressor Shield. Now, this is mainly to accommodate suppressors that don't connect to the handguard, right? So again, the RAS, um, you know, again, rail attached shield, attached to the rail, universal rail, uh, right here. Um, then you've got the modular attached, which is right here. Now with the direct attached suppressor shield, this, and I'm not saying this particular one, but when you purchase that one, it attaches directly to the suppressor. So if you see these little, uh, little screws here, doesn't dig in because it's a uh, it's it's obviously uh, flat or just you know on that end it's not going to damage your suppressor but you tighten it um, enough you know I think it's uh don't quote me on this but you look it up um, you tighten it to a certain torque you know and I, I'm sure it's not crazy heavy um, but it'll go right on your suppressor and the reason why this is uh, helpful is because a lot of people have systems uh, bolt guns which have very very long um, long barrels and they're very far away uh, from the handguard so you, this system wouldn't work nor would the MRAC um, if you have something like LMT and quick change barrels adding a dedicated suppressor to each one of those barrels if you're trying to switch from a certain caliber let's say 5.56 five, to 300 blackout um, having the direct attached suppressor shield is going to be really nice because you could just have that on that dedicated barrel if you're you know that 16 inch barrel if you're going to a class and um you know if you're in the, you know going across state lines or flying or x y and z and then when you get back home and you got you know your shorty um or you know you can actually just swap it or something that's smaller than that longer whatever the heck but a system like lmt that you know practices the barrel swaps uh on that monolithic rail It'll, it'll allow you to keep all of your suppressors um, protected and yourself in this regard. So uh, Montac, in my opinion, incredibly innovative solution. And, you know, as you can see, the design just allows a suppressor to cool off more effectively because it leaves that area around the suppressor, gives it that air to cool, okay? Um, you know, we... we the space, you know, again, 1.5 inches and, uh, you know, 1.7 inches on the inner diameter, it allows the, that 
0 0.2 inch space between that sp the suppressor and, and, and the shield. That hot, basically this will heat up and allow cool air to come in, hot air will come and it just, it gets pushed out. So um, I've seen tests on where the suppressor is actually 200 degrees less uh, than your carbon fiber uh, suppressor shield, right? So that's gonna help keep you safe. It's gonna, again, preserve the health of the suppressor. And on top of that, um, it's, it's gonna keep all, all your stuff safe. So um, I was told by, um, you know, and, and again, it's gonna keep your stuff safe in regards to prolonged heat exposure. Uh, when you look at these two designs, uh, a suppressor that's titanium, I'm told that, you know, by Huxworks that this will actually pinhole. It'll heat up and little tiny holes will start to open it, uh, open up. So again, you want to trap that, right? Or you want to give it room to breathe. It's in the summer, it's humid, it's gross. You putting on a sweater, right? With a turtleneck? Or are you going to go put on a tank top or a t-shirt? Let's America come on in. See what I mean? Uh, your suppressor needs a little bit of love too. Now, um, you waited nine months and paid two hundred dollar tax stamp, you know, for this stuff. Uh, it's you know, it's don't be ashamed to treat it right. That's the uh, more balanced side, or just rather, that's just the that's just a small factor in in the innovative design here. Uh, the carbon fiber being heat resistant. Um, Again, it reduces mirage and mirage. Uh, I think we, you know, if we went over this, you know, skip skip a little bit. But mirage is the distorted visuals um, due to heat coming off your suppressor with high volumes of fire. Um, your optic is obviously going to be mounted, you know, this way. Um, you're looking down the barrel, right? Now, if this is, you know, 700 degrees, uh, or just, you know, you've been shooting at an intense firing schedule, schedule. Um, maybe it's a hot day, right? And you're going to get, and, and you've got your suppressor in the sun, or this, this kind of in the sun, you're going to get mirage. You're going to get those distorted lines, and that's going to mess with uh, your, your ability to see your target clearly. If you've ever been, uh, you know, looked at the horizon uh, near a hot day, you know, just maybe the pavement, you know, on the hot day, sand at the beach, uh, you know, you'll see that image kind of, being, you know, squiggly, I guess. Uh, and that effect is heat mirage, which can make hitting your target much more difficult, uh, distorting your image. Now, because it's not covering it, because it's not trapping the heat in there, it's allowing the heat to escape, therefore uh, reducing mirage. The other thing is that you have carbon fiber on top, and that's going to resist the heat. So that's, again, you're going to get less mirage with carbon fiber wrapped around your suppressor, and it's not wrapped, it's actually, you know, the space versus just a piece of cloth and, you know, fiberglass sleeve or, um, you know, there's so many other solutions which uh, we'll go over. But this is the primary design in the competitive marketplace. Uh, and honestly, this is just uh, unacceptable, it, 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 especially when, you know, and I, I might, you know, be a little biased or shill or whatever the heck you want to call me. Um, again, the concept is the same. August you know, humidity, 100 degrees, you're putting on a sweater, you're putting on a t-shirt, and uh, there you go. So, any questions about that, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, happy to, uh, to, to discuss a little bit further, but this has been, um, you know, again, my findings. So, uh, one last benefit that, that I want to talk a little bit about is that the shield, you know, actually being a shield is not, you know, not only do you get the mirage, uh, protection from mirage not only do you get the protection from bangs not only do you keep your suppressor cooler um but oh, well actually that was the last point I, I actually kind of blew it up you protect it from bangs so titanium bang dent no good uh here hard suppressor shield this is gonna crack first if it cracks i mean <laughs> i put some work in on this guy and i actually feel bad for how i treated it because it's so beautiful um, but, you know, again, moving around, throwing things in and out of the truck, it's, um, you know, it's, it's bound to get banged up a little bit. I would not, you know, again, carbon fiber, it's not super thick. It's not super thick here. I know it's strong, but 
don't abuse it. You know, I mean, abuse it, go for it, do whatever you want. But if you do prepare, you know, for the consequences of your actions. So, um, I really, you know, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I baby this as you can see. Um, but you know, try not to be an idiot, you know, just try. You could be an idiot though. It's up to you. Um, you know, you won't disappoint me. Now, basically, I want you to know that it takes about one time, one time for you to touch your suppressor when it's hot and, uh, and burn your, really just burn the heck out of yourself, um, before you start thinking about, oh no, I got to go shopping for something, you know, that's, that's a solution. I got to go taking care of this, right? Um, or better yet, one of these, right? You'll see a lot of this. You won't see, <laughs> there's nothing on the marketplace like this, which is why uh, I, I like it so much. I'm such a huge advocate. Uh, I'm so excited about this because again, you're shooting, you transition your pistol. And uh, even if you have a tuck suppressor, you know, that little bit that's sticking out, that's, that's gonna get you. It could hit, you know, burn a hole in your pants, gear, hand, leg, bag, car. Uh, again, save you the hospital visit and allow your suppressor to cool more effectively, which again, preserves the life uh, of the suppressor. And to me, is just a much more uh, significant offering than the competition, right? And that leads us into our next subject. So if you were waiting for the whole competition part, this is it. Um, if you wanted to just kind of go to the conclusion, you could skip again ahead a little to the little towards, towards the end there. Um, but now I'll talk a little bit about the competition and uh, my market research. Got a little swig of water, forgive me. Now, are there other suppressor covers? Sure. I've done the research for you. I've gone through the pain of buying these and trying various ones out. Um, you only see this one here is because this is the one that I can't get rid of. Uh, frankly, I, I've already gotten rid of the rest um, because they don't adequately do what they are supposed to do. These are suppressor covers. This is a suppressor shield. This is more of what I'm looking for when it comes to protecting my investment, right? And uh, these are very important to me. Um, and so as such, protect your investment, right? And, and so right now on the market, what I've tried, uh, you've got Coltac, you've got Burnproof, you've got Magpul, Armageddon Gear, Manta, Liberty Defense, and again, it's it, none quite like ModTech. And you'd be right to look at them, you know, if you want, but you'd be just... Just oh so wrong. And, and you know, I, I really hate people that make sweeping generalizations or act like they're all knowing. So, you know, I'll give you a couple reasons real quick and you just do your own research and take everything I say with a grain of salt till you get your hands on experience and formulate your own opinion. You know, these are just, again, my personal findings. I am not a door kicker. I'm not anyone special. Um, you know, I throw some rounds down range for fun and, uh, you know, get as much training as I can. And uh, that, that's really about it. So, uh, again, I'm much more casual than, the, you know, again, the, the FBI, the special forces, um, who are actually using these today. So I know for a fact that when um, certain agencies uh, approve of, of gear, that gear tends to take off in the civilian market. And I think that this, you know, if I can invest stock in this company, I sure as heck would. Um, I'm a huge fan. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be really cool. So... Either way, uh, you know, to get started, just to do a little kind of rapid fire, uh, your Coltac uh, looks like an insulated lunchbox handle, flat out, and it melts frequently. It's also connected uh, with Velcro. Magpul looks like a thermos. Looks matter a little bit. But the other thing about that is not just looks, okay? Um, it, it, the way that it attaches, all right, it's not a, not a nice system like this. You know, not, not, not quite, you know, although it does have the cover, right? It's got the cover aspect. Um, you ever open a mason jar? You know, that first little latch, you just pop it on open and the top comes uh, and it kind of hangs over by that latch. That is how they connect, <laughs> that is how they connect their uh, suppressor cover, um, Magpul suppressor cover with steel clamps. So literally uh, it, it clamps onto two points on, on your suppressor. Um, it just it 
feels a little cheap and, and I like Magpul. So um, that, that's a big thing. So it's plastic, okay, with steel clamps. And that's the Magpul product for a hot suppressor. Now, you trust plastic and heat? Neither do I. Manta Defense uh, looks like an... <laughs> this one's kind of cool, um, but it looks like a uh, M16 handguard on your suppressor. And it touches the suppressor. It weighs 7 ounces. It can't handle continuous fire. And also can't handle uh, more than 50 rounds. Uh, it touches at about 4 touch points right along here. And uh, it's a proprietary material. And this... I, I has me has some questions, right? You have your shield. You could shoot as much as you want, literally as much as you want. Okay. Um, well, I don't want to say literally as much as you want because I know some of you guys out there, like Slade and the regulars, you know, you guys are putting a lot of rounds down range. So, uh, you know, keep your infrared laser thermometer uh, nearby. But you could shoot a significant amount more uh, with your suppressor shield versus something that's just uh, a cover. So that Manta Defense, again, looks like that M16 handguard, touches it on four points. It weighs seven ounces on the business end of the gun. Uh, can't handle that continuous fire. Um, and, and for me, if you can't handle 50 rounds, which, again, I'm not saying that you'll ever need 50 rounds in any situation. God forbid you don't. But the fact is, is that that creates heat. Okay? Now, if I have something directly touching my suppressor, and it's a proprietary material that melts after 50 shots, what happens on the 51st? You know, I, I use a Hux work because I'm concerned about the crap that I'm breathing in. There's a lot of toxic stuff going on here. Am I going to be breathing in more toxic fumes with this proprietary material that's melting on my suppressor? Begs the question, right? I have no idea, right? That It's just not, doesn't work for me. Next would be the Liberty Defense, and and I personally love Liberty Defense, and I know you've seen the 19 Syndicate video, and you know they 1911 rather, uh, 1911 Syndicate video, and you know a lot of respect to those guys and the cinematography and, and what they do. Um, I actually got some stories about their real estate stuff. Uh, <laughs> if you ever want to, uh, you know, uh, just kind of feel better about yourself, uh, you know, just. <laughs> Um, it, just ask away in the comments because I've had a interesting experience uh, with those folks. Uh, either way, um, again, I like their YouTube channel, so don't take that as any kind of um, shade or anything like that. Now, the concept of their um, their suppressor cover, okay? Y you're you're not gonna like trying to, and I'm serious when I say this. This is not a joke. Trying to stretch a steel cable, okay, so stretch a steel cable around the diameter of your suppressor and then clip it in order to keep your suppressor wrap on, okay? Now they brag, it's like, again, you're stretching a steel cable. It, it just doesn't, to me, it, it, and honestly, it was a bad time. Um, it took forever. It sucked. If you talk to anybody, they even mentioned that in that video. Uh, if you talk to anybody that's tried it, it's extremely difficult. It's incredibly frustrating. Uh, and and you, again, you don't want to have that process. So um, again, you're going to stretch steel or 12 o'clock, right? You can't mess up. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, done. All right. Here's the other thing. Now, I'm not an expert on this part, right? I'm no geologist. I don't know much about rocks and earth and all that other good stuff. But let's not forget that that suppressor cover is made of quartz, all right? The Liberty Defense one. Um, to my understanding, again, I'm not an expert. Um, but when you heat rocks to a high enough temperature, they blow up. They explode, right? I don't know if that's the case with quartz, but for me, personally, got enough explosions on this end of the firearm that I'm worried about. I, I just don't need to worry about another one. So if someone could provide some insight there, um, that would be that would be neat. But again, to me, huge flaw. Again, cover, it, it doesn't do it. Uh, then you've got this burn proof. And um, honestly, this is a piece, this is the first 
um, suppressor cover that people get, and as such, they defend it rigorously. They defend this rigorously as affirmation that they made the right choice, okay? Uh, let's look at what this is. Again, the layered condom approach, a fiberglass sleeve, a, uh, a cover. So uh, you've got that, it's, it's just a piece of crap and it falls off the, the mechanism, it, it's just awful. Um, <laughs> if you ever get a chance, uh, go see what those, and, and you know, I don't, want, I don't want to throw too much shade, um, but I will say, I've had experiences with burn proof. Um, you guys have seen me interact with Trigicon, Hollow Sun, Radian, Midwest, Unity, EOTech, uh, Huxworks, CGS, uh, all these companies, right? And, and then uh, that's not even including the holster companies and all this stuff. You've seen me. I call all these people before I do a review on them, and I ask them um, for for information. That way I make sure that I get it right. Uh, talking to these guys was not a pleasant experience at all. Um, I found them very smug. Uh, I found them unprofessional. Uh, I found them uh, very just snobby and, and for no reason. Uh, I think it's because that they're popular and they enjoy um, you know, they enjoy kind of being a mainstay. Uh, but again, we know what this is. Now that we've been educated, we know that this is the layered condom approach. We've seen these, <laughs> I've seen them melt. I've seen this, you know, get, it's just, they're not a good product. Um, but again, it's, you judge for yourself. Uh, I, I don't like any other suppressor cover at all because I think that design is inherently flawed, opposed to a shield, opposed to Montac, opposed to American manufacturing and a veteran owned company. Now the last one is Armageddon gear and Armageddon gear has a sweater problem, it's basically a burn proof. Now, this video is long enough, so I didn't mean to take up so much of your time, um, but I am passionate about this because a lot of people don't know about this, and you will spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on uh, basically this, stuff that is gonna take up space, stuff that you're not gonna use. So, in conclusion, um, I believe the pros far outweigh any potential con to the Montec uh, suppressor shield. Um, I plan on having this on anything that I acquire moving forward. And as you could probably tell, I'm a huge fan of this. And again, it's my favorite product that I have purchased. Favorite product I have ever purchased. And it has, to me, uh, extremely low flaws. And, I, and maybe I'm biased because purchasing so many different suppressor covers and trying them all and not finding uh, satisfaction in any of that was, was just a huge pain. And, um, you know, this goes on for five seconds. Uh, and it's just been a beautiful and wonderful experience ever since. I just don't have to think about it. And it's just so nice to not have to think about your life-saving equipment because you know that it works. So uh, the only thing that, you know, some people will say um, is suppressor shadow, you know, with this. Uh, whoop did he do Get a longer rail. Uh, if you have a suppressor on there, you're dealing with suppressor shadow anyway. Uh, whether you're doing with this or whether you're doing with that, it, you got a suppressor on there with a flashlight back here, you're going to get some shadow uh, train, right? That, that's why we train. Now, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, people say that this are, these are expensive. Like I told you, sign up, uh, get their, um, get their uh, sales, right? But I actually think that they're not that, they're literally $100 more than this. I, I, they're, and then they have some that are even, even cheaper than that. So it's less expensive than that. This is, it's a premium product, premium materials, premium manufacturing methods, and it's the literally the cutting edge. And I don't even want to say cutting edge, it's so cheesy. This is the most innovative that there is in the marketplace, as I've shown you. And uh, I think that you'll, you'll find that. And uh, ultimately, when, when you do your research, um, but when you think about it, $100 more than this, um, and you're, again, protecting your suppressor that you've waited for for nine months, um, or as opposed to dinging it and paying for a recore uh, or a whole new suppressor, uh, you know, you're protecting yourself and, and your property from, and really you're just protecting your wallet by saving your ass uh, a trip to the ER. So ultimately, uh, the choice is up to you. I hope that I've been a resource and, and provided you enough education on the matter. 
So uh, as my father and my grandfather would say, when looking at this against the competition, forget about it. Have a good day, everybody.